Hello and welcome to the second video for my NeoPixel Ring Clock version 2. This time I want to show you the mounting of the 3D printed and painted parts into its ash frame. I will also discuss the issue of light bleed I had to overcome before I could assemble the clock. Towards the end of the video I will show you some of the tools I used to create this project. First I would like to show you how the clock was assembled. This is the ash frame I created on my wood turning lathe. The external diameter is 240mm with an internal diameter of 190mm and a depth of 40mm. The first item to be installed is a round piece of 4mm thick glass. The main reason for the glass is to provide a nice flat rigid surface to prevent the diffuser, fitted next, from distorting from the heat generated by the NeoPixel rings. And keeping the diffuser flat against the 3D printed parts helps prevent the display from becoming blurry. The diffuser is a film of white plastic approximately half a millimetre thick. It was cut from a plastic folder I purchased from a local stationer's. The diffuser helps the light dispersion within each compartment thus improving the overall effect of the clock having hands. Next to be fitted is the assembled 3D printed parts. You will see the electronics mounted on the back and held in place with 3D printed trays which are super glued on. The final part is an ash ring, again turned on my lathe, that uses screws to hold it in place. It has sufficient downward force to prevent the clock face from rotating within the frame. As an aside, I did try plain paper as a diffuser, but the paper fibres were visible when light was shone through it. A near perfect solution was some glossy inkjet photo paper, but I could see the manufacturer's watermark through that, so the best solution is the plastic sheet. The next thing I want to talk about is light bleed. I chose white plastic for the 3D printed part so as to reflect as much light as possible, but I soon witnessed the issue where light from one cell leaks or bleeds into the adjacent cells, as demonstrated in this image. This is because the white plastic, like the diffuser, is translucent where thin walls between each cell exist. I tried painting the cells with white spray paint, but the white paint was just as translucent as the plastic and was therefore ineffective. Next I tried black spray paint and that was very effective at stopping the light bleed. The thing here is, black absorbs light, thus reducing the overall brightness of the cells. In the photo you can see the light bleed is eliminated, but the right hand compartment especially, the tail is very dim. When using black paint, the overall effect when the whole clock face is lit, is there's a dark region between the middle and outer rings, as you can see here. When I mentioned the issue of light bleed to my good friend Max, aka Clive Maxfield, he suggested painting the cells silver. I tried it and the results were magnificent. Not only did it stop the light bleed, it boosted the overall brightness as well, as you can see in this image. I do however think it now looks like a Christmas decoration or a base for a wedding cake. So I decided to paint the top black using a sponge paint roller and some black spray paint. I think it looks much better for it, even though it won't be seen. I think you will agree the area between the inner and outer rings is now much brighter. Shame you can't see the clock for real, because the images captured by the camera don't do the clock justice. Before I wrap up the video, I thought I would just mention the tools I used in creating the 3D printed parts. First is Google SketchUp Make a free 3D drawing package that's relatively easy to get to grips with. Here you can see some of the parts that I've designed. Next is my Up Mini 3D printer. And because the printer is quite small, I have to print my clock parts in several pieces and fix them together afterwards. The plastic I use is PLA, which has a low melting point and the quality of the prints is quite reasonable. I did try using ABS plastic, which has a much higher melting point, but because the printer bed doesn't get hot enough, an up mini design compromise, the parts came out with a curvy underneath and were not acceptable. The electronics is quite simple at the moment, with only an Arduino Nano microcontroller and a real-time clock module. I will however be fitting some buttons so that I can set the time and change some of the functions. I will also be adding some other toys as the project progresses. The power comes from a USB power adapter and a USB cable with the connector cut off at one end and this provides the 5 volts to drive all of the circuits. Well that wraps up this video. Comments are always welcome and please like and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.